if you've watched some of my fly tying videos here, you'll note that I, I really love the caddis pattern, and so that's what we're going to tap a, a variant on a, a dry caddis fly pattern here. I've got a size 16 hook here in my vise. I'm just going to use some beige nano silk. Just happens to be what I have on hand. You know, and then I'll tie these, you know, the dries. I'll do the the deer, elk hair, caddis. Um, I will do the nymphs um, for sure. I use them all the time. Um, and they're very effective. I really like this pattern. This is just kind of adds to your arsenal a little bit. It's a, it's going to be more of a, a, a spinner or a spent um, version of the caddis fly. And what we're going to do is we're going to start out with some super fine... Uh, dabbing, I'm just going to grab myself a tiny little bit um, of tan. Get that out of my super fine dabbing dispenser there. Just need a finger dub that right onto my thread here. That's probably more than I'm going to need, so we may end up pulling some of it off. And with a caddis pattern, um, we're going to want it a little bit thicker towards the back. So I'm going to go ahead and take a few overlapping wraps here to more towards the back. And I'll tighten up my dumping as I go along here. And we're going to build basically a reverse taper. Where this is going to get a little bit thinner the further we move up towards the eye of the hook. And I'm just going to go ahead and take it um, all the way there. Now I'm going to take my thread a little bit backwards now. Um, so we've got that nice, um, very trim uh, body, which will be nice. It'll help this float. It will, you know, get your floating on there. There's not going to be as much absorption of water. So this is going to work out really well. And I'm, get, I'm using a, be a bleached partridge here um, from Nature Spirit. And the feather that I've, I've chosen is kind of looking about like this. I'm actually going to try to dye a, a, a partridge skin. Um, so as we prepare the feather, we'll just strip off the fuzzies. Once we have the fuzzies kind of stripped off, we'll be left um, with the feather looking about like this. We've got a nice clean um, stem on the feather, um, and it's a fairly well-balanced um, feather as well in terms of what we the, the number of fibers we have on either side and I don't mind if this one gets looking a little junky um, because it is a spent so it's it's you know in its dying phase I'm gonna just put that over the top of the shank of my hook here and I'm gonna just take a wrap or two to um, get that secured down where I want it on the top I'm not gonna necessarily pull that really hard because what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to pull on this handle uh, which is the the bare stem here and I'm going to pull this because I want this wing straight over the top of the hook but I also want it to just be about you know the the gap of a, a hook length yeah just about like that so now we've got a nice wing um, laying over the top here and I'm just going to take my thread forward we'll go ahead and hold this stem straight up and hit secure now I can go ahead and clip that off. We're going to use a hackle on the uh, front end of the fly um, that's going to be looking like its legs. Um, you can use a whole variety of different things. I, I just chose this time a, a really light um, barred ginger uh, color. So when I pull that hackle um, against that gauge, what I'm looking for is a hackle fiber where these fibers are sticking out to about 16 because that's the size of hook that I'm using and this is just about the size that I want and so that's how you're going to measure your hackle to make sure you get the right hackle size. So with my hackle I'm taking off I'm going to go ahead kind of stand some of those fibers on the base straight up and I'm going to strip them right off to give myself a little bit of a tie-in point. Uh, just like that. I'm going to want to tie this so the shiny face now, these feathers are going to have this side is, is is a lot more dull looking than this side. This side is a lot more shiny looking. I want that shiny side facing me. Now, usually I'm going to tie it in like this um, with where I want my hackle to start um, back here, right where my um, partridge feather is. But this time we're actually going to tie it the other way around. Okay, so 
I want to place that stem where I know my first wrap of hackle is going to go just about right behind the eye of the hook here. And we're going to go ahead and lock that into place with a couple of thread wraps. And we'll just take that back. And so now I've got my hackle jetting over the top of the front uh, or, or over the eye of my hook. I'm going to just secure it down there a little bit. I'm going to reach in and grab my scissors. I'm going to find that piece of stem that's sitting there and I'm going to snip that off so that we got rid of that. And just for some added durability, and I was watching an, uh, another fly tire tie this, um, just um, taking a tiny little bit of super glue, Z Mant Zap, um, whatever you want to call it. I'm not going to put much, but just the tiniest little uh, dab of that on these thread wraps here are going to help us secure down this this hackle a little bit better and once I've done that I'm actually going to go ahead and run my thread through it back to where my partridge wing starts um, so right about there and then I'm going to hold my hackle kind of straight up and I'm going to take some pretty you know try to make these first of all first wrap Make, make sure you go around at least once or one, two wraps there to get a full wrap there. And then I'm going to just start wrapping backwards towards this uh, partridge feather. And I want the wraps one right in front of the other as much as I possibly can um, without trapping hackles, but also not leaving too many gaps in, in what I'm tying here. Getting back to about where we want to be. Right about there is going to be fine with me. Um, so now I'm going to secure my hackle back here. I'm going to kind of jiggle my thread back and forth. Just helps me um, keep from trapping too many of these hackle fibers. I'll take a couple of wraps over the top. So that's secure now. But me being OCD a little bit, I'll take a, another wrap kind of behind it as well and then I can just go ahead and release that hackle from my hackle pliers and put those away so I can find them next time I'm tying. I'm going to now I'm just kind of carefully take my thread and I'm going to bring it back up through this hackle that we just put on up towards the eye of the hook and I'll wiggle it back and forth just to help me not trap quite so many fibers. Um, but what's really kind of cool about this technique um, is that we've now actually secured that hackle down um, pretty well. I'm just going to go ahead and stroke some of these fibers back and I'm going to have some stragglers that I'll end up cleaning up with my tweezers like I always do. Um, but we're just going to tie a, you know, a few wraps there around the eye of the hook to create ourselves our little head. I'm going to grab my whip finisher. Take a couple of turn uh, whip finish here and I will wiggle it again back and forth a little bit to try to not trap too many of these fibers. There will be some that are trapped as always and we'll just clean those up afterwards. I'll just pull that nice and tight just like that. I'm going to turn that vise towards me a little bit. I'll turn my to the cutting portion of my whip finisher here kind of run it right against my thread. My thread is released. Okay, so after getting this nice and cleaned up, we've got a good looking fly. One thing that, um, again, I've seen other tires do, and I, I like doing this as well, is I'm going to actually, again, this is why one of the reasons the rotating feature is so nice. I'm going to turn this upside down, and I'm actually going to go ahead and just give this guy a little bit of a haircut um, on the bottom. You know, all of that hard and challenging work that we've done with our hackle pliers. Um, we're cutting the bottom part of that out and what that's going to do is it's going to help this sit a little bit flatter in the water. Um, remember this is a spent or a spinner, a dying caddis fly. Um, I don't mind if this back end here uh, gets a little bit kind of rough and bushy looking because that's what it's going to look like when it's, you know, if we have a, a caddis fly hitting the water. Um, and the last stage of its life cycle, um, but you'll you'll knock them dead with this fly. Um, give it a shot.